Hello and welcome to today's show. So, last week we had the Devastate 8, which is a supercar. We now have gone down a class to the sports car range, and today we have this beauty, the Pariah. Now, um, a lot of you who play GTA may know that this car is known as the supercar killer mainly because it can it can compete against pretty much every single supercar out there and beat them um, but that is only in a straight line as far as I know um, around a course I'm not sure um, but we've got it here today and a quick little walk through this is obviously the custom version um, stock rims because they look kind of cool and they're unique and they're chrome and chrome looks very good with this paint job um, we've got the front splitter for the, uh, for the traction we've got the spoiler for the downforce and the grip the lowered suspension to help us with them turns and also quite a bit of carbon carbon fiber around it which will make it very light along with the prior logo on the split on the uh, skirts um, as far as handling goes not very slippery if you know how to do it um, it does have quite a few slippery spots if you're going a bit nuts with it but if you get control of it it is very good the interior pretty much like any other car very standard, you've got your two seats, you've got your stitching which matches the colour of the car um, standard standard uh, instruments at the front, no crazy steering wheel which is always good standard radio, some speakers automatic windows, stuff like that and pretty sizable boot um, so let's take this out for a spin shot. Now, obviously, first thing you're going to know with the custom version is it is very quick off the line. Um, in a straight line, like I said before, very much a supercar killer. It doesn't take many, it's not very easily defeated when it comes to straightaways. Um, as you will see as we go over to our test track um, I believe this car is one of the cars that can do the quick launch um, where you hold the handbrake and the acceleration halfway and then shoot off the line no wheel spin whatsoever gets you practically full speed straight away um, but as you saw just then the tail whipping out just a little bit this over here, see if this guy will open up the gate, or do we have to do it ourselves again? Nope, we have to do it ourselves again. Why do I even bother? Right, let's go and get this button. I guess it's good, it stops people from coming in. Come on, there we go. Bit of delay there. Right, let's get this in here. Alright, here we go. Alright, let's get to the track, shall we? get this started. So we're going to start off in the same place as we did with the Devastate 8 back here along this line. A black line just here just at the tip of the car. Right so launch, launching away, handbrake on, acceleration at 50 just before the spit of flames and then you let go of the handbrake Hang on, I nearly did it then. Hold on. Right, this one, it is possible. I don't think I can do it. I don't think I'm getting the right amount of acceleration. It might be doing too much. But, as you can see, just acceleration near enough getting to the end of the track at the same amount of time as the Devastate 8 did very good handling when the uh, when the acceleration is full 
practically got round that last corner with not a single bit of spin or anything. Um, but well, there are questions for me, however. Um, obviously, this is known as Supercar Killer, matching every possible supercar out there. Um, however, there is a car that I believe is faster than this, um, but it's quite a bumpy one. But what we will do first before that is compare the two cars of this one and the stock version paired to one another just to see the um, time difference in stock versus modified or tuned so let's check that out see how they do So obviously as you can tell by normal stock car being quite slower than the tuned version. Um, however I do have a little bit of a description here from the uh, from the actual um, I'm going to call it this. Um, the actual magazine that this car is advertised in um, and it says the Ocelot Pariah is a sports car featured in GTA Online Next Gen added to the game as part of the 1.4 Doomsday Heist update on December 12th 2017 the Pariah can be purchased from the legendary motorsport site for 1.42 million dollars that's 1 million four hundred and twenty thousand and can be stored in your garage as a personal vehicle. So, first of all, the pretty obvious thing, the price. That is literally for the stock version. So, once you've finished tuning it to fully upgrade, because like I said before, who has a not very tuned up car in this game anymore? Um, you're going to be over 2 million probably. So just uh, you know, keep a few mil in your savings before you buy and purchase this, because you're going to be using a lot of money. Um, obviously storing it in your personal vehicle garage, fantastic. Um, so yeah, but now the car that could possibly top this. Is uh, it's 
quite, you know, it's it's from a country where they know how to make sports cars and supercars and hypercars. So um, let's see what this is like, shall we? is the possible pariah killer the Itali G T O now based on I'm assuming going by the way it looks a Ferrari the Itali GTO is either first or very close second to, to the pariah um, it does, like every other car, have its flaws, but we are going to start off with the description of the magazine that it is advertised in. So, uh, let me just get it up. Here we go. The Itali GTO is a sports car in Grand Theft Auto 1 and Grand Tora featured in GTA Online as part of the constant something of the Arena War update released on December 26, 2018 during the festive surprise 2018 event it is manufactured in Gruti in the HD universe not really sure what a lot of that means, but obviously it's newer than the Pariah. Modern. It was released during the Christmas period. So a lot of people might have thought that it was going to be a very good car. And if you can control it, it is a very nice car to drive. Stock version is very easy to control, it's a very good cruising car, the steering is not that bad. Um, it's it's very sticky to the road. Um, the only problem is the, uh, the bouncing suspension. If you go over bumps on a bumpy road, this thing gets some little bounces and when you get them little bounces it does give you some quite insane speed and if you don't know how to control them a bit like that um, you can spin out and have some pretty big crashes which isn't really what you, what you want to do if you are racing um, but to give you an idea of times um, what we're going to do is we're going to put the stock prior up against the stock Italian GTO and then after that we're going to do the tuned version of each car and put them up against one another as well on the test track so it implements speed braking, cornering hard cornering um, so it pretty much has everything you need to thoroughly test a car. So let's have a go and see how they are. I'm not really sure who I want to be faster, but let's just see what happens, shall we?
Okay, so I'm going to be brutally honest with you. Um, while recording this, I haven't actually seen what times they are. So I honestly have no clue which is faster or how much faster. But what I can do is give you a rough. I can give you an estimate um, from my point of view right now. Um, or maybe not. I thought I could, but maybe I can't, and I don't know why. Um, but while I'm sorting this out, um, the customization wise, it's pretty. well pretty. I mean, have you seen it? Look at it. This is a gorgeous looking car. The stock version that I did in the grey is very, very nice. Um, the red on the stock version actually comes with it if you use a stock version in a race, if you're able to anyway. Um, stock version is only available on um, is only available on custom races, you can't use it on Rockstar created races. Um, so. um, but I'm just going to have to go with, because for some reason what I was going to try and do is not working. Um, I'm going to have to go with that it's going to be probably very close. So, basically it in the end of the, at the end of the day they're both very close in, one's got better speed one's got better handling one's got better acceleration one has better something than the other um, but at the end of the day you're the one racing it if you think you can handle this with the bumps then go for it my opinion my suggestion would be if you're doing races like stunt races use the Itali GTO um, the only thing is if it's got race like if it's a stunt race if you've got tubes you're gonna have to be using that brake because them tubes get you a lot of bounces and they get you a lot of acceleration so you're gonna have to have your brakes apart from but the prior you won't have to as much because it doesn't bounce a lot around so much um, but with street races on the road you're gonna have to use the pariah because this thing the speed it goes and the bumps it gets and the acceleration it gives you, you're gonna be crashing into everything possible that's around you so you're gonna have to use the pariah but like I said at the end of the day if you think you can handle this thing going full speed on a street where it's very bumpy go for it that's your choice um, but those are just my opinions. All the information and stuff that I give on these, on this series, it's all my own opinion. You might have your own opinion or preferences, and that's fair enough. But these are my opinions, and it may give you some, some hints or something. I'm not sure what, but if it gives you anything information-wise, then let me know in the comments down below. Um, leave a like if you're enjoying it, and if you're enjoying the, uh, the style of the videos I'm doing on this. Um, and obviously don't forget to subscribe if you want to continue seeing these, and the notification bell if you want to keep up to date when the next one is up. So I'm going to leave it there with you. It's up to you. Your choice of what cars to do, how to tune them, what customiz what customizations are on them. So yeah. And the next episode I might switch it up a bit. Rather than doing a um rather than doing a which is fastest for a race, um I'm gonna do something slightly different. I'm gonna do about a car that I very much love and was think the most anticipated car to be released on the current 
um, car drip feed. So it's going to be that one. But hopefully you guys enjoyed, and I will see you next time.